Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in to The Clean Cuisine. Today we're gonna to be making this amazing, delicious meatloaf. It's a classic from my childhood. My mom used to make it all the time. It was never the same twice, but we did love our meatloaf. So this is kind of a spin off of that, and I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So all the ingredients that you need are in front of you here on the screen. I will put those up shortly. Uh, I was visiting my mom on the East Coast, so this is uh, a little cameo in her kitchen. So I'm going to start with a pretty nice size onion and uh, the total amount of meat I'm going to use is two pounds. So if you're just cooking for one, two, maybe three people, you might want to half this recipe. I was cooking for um, five adults and two kids for this particular dish and uh, we pretty much ate it all. So I used a full two pounds of meat and you'll see it makes two nice size uh, loaves for the meatloaf. So. Uh, here I am dicing the onions and I just put a couple slits in it horizontally and then went through it vertically to kind of make some um, uh, pre-cuts in it and then I just slice it down and that'll give it the nice dice that I'm looking for. Uh, of course my mom's cutting board here is a little warped and I did not do my trick which if you've seen some of my other videos I did not place a wet rag or napkin underneath my cutting board and it was moving all around. So that just goes to show how important it is and why you need it. So here we go. Onions are diced. I'm going to take three cloves of garlic and just do it the same. I don't necessarily need to mince them. I'm just going to give them a quick chop. So I start by using the side of my blade and um, kind of smacking it down. That will help remove the skin really easily. And then I'll just go ahead and chop those. And uh, you'll find in this particular recipe, I do not use um, a loaf pan at all. And there's a lot of reasons for that, but um, mainly it does not trap the grease. I don't know if you've had meatloaf in a, in a loaf tin before, but you'll notice all the grease kind of settles to the bottom. So when you do finally go to remove the meatloaf, there's usually, it's dripping with grease. Um, the way I do it is I actually allow it to sit on a rack on top of a sheet pan and that will allow the grease to run through. Uh, another good um, advantage of doing it this way is that you're able, we'll, we'll make a glaze at the end, it's optional, but I think it's delicious, it adds a lot of flavor to the meatloaf. And uh, this way you can actually cover more of the surface area of the meatloaf as opposed to just the top uh, if it were to be in the loaf pan. So. Um, I'll describe that a little bit more in detail when we get to that stage, but just to give you a heads up, you will not be needing a loaf pan for this particular recipe. So I got my onions and my garlic diced. I'm just going to set those aside for now. I used one pound of grass-fed beef and one pound of organic turkey. I like to mix my meats. Uh, turkey's a little bit more lean. I prefer it that way. I think the red meat tends to get a little bit heavy at times, so this is my particular take on it. So I used one pound of... Uh, the grass of beef, one pound of turkey, and to that I'm just going to add two farm fresh eggs. We do not uh, do dairy, a lot of dairy in our house, so I'm going to use almond milk. It's unsweetened almond milk. You can use any milk of your choice. And then we're going to go ahead and add some dried herbs. I'm going to add about a teaspoon and a half of both thyme and basil. And then I do have some fresh parsley you can see in the back there that we're going to chop up. Um, we are also a gluten-free household. So the breadcrumbs that I'm going to use, which is just under a cup, are gluten-free. If you are on the Whole30 and you'd like to make this a Whole30 compliant dish, go ahead and use almond meal in place of the breadcrumbs. There's a lot of other different tricks. You could use mushrooms, you can use other veggies, um, but if you want to get the same consistency in this particular dish, I would say probably almond meal would be the best. So I went ahead and added about two tablespoons, or excuse me, two teaspoons of Dijon mustard and a couple shakes of Cholula, probably the equivalent of one to two teaspoons. Uh, you do not taste it at all in the meatloaf, so do not worry about it being spicy. It just adds a little more depth of flavor to it. So I went ahead and added my gluten-free breadcrumbs, about a cup's worth, and I'm going to pinch off about a quarter of this bunch of parsley. And then I'm just going to um, finely chop that and add that into our meatloaf mixture. And there you have it. Now while I'm doing this, I am going to get a saucepan or a saute pan on the oven at a medium high heat. And uh, we're gonna start browning our garlic and our onions here real shortly. You could do that step ahead of time. This is just the sequence that I went in today. 
um, but we're going to let those cool and also add it into our mixture as well. So I added about one and a half to two tablespoons of uh, sea salt and about a teaspoon of, I'm sorry, I said tablespoons. Definitely don't add two tablespoons. Two teaspoons of salt and about a teaspoon of fresh cracked pepper. So here's our saute pan. I'm just going to add about two tablespoons of olive oil to it. And then we'll get cracking on sauteing our onions and our garlic. And I'm sure you've come across recipes where this step is completely omitted. People don't saute them ahead of time. Again, guys, I know I'm all about simple meals, but I'm also about flavor. So if you want to omit this step and just throw it in and mix it in your meatloaf, I'm sure it'll still turn out great. But this is really kind of those few things that just take it up a notch as far as flavor wise. So this, um, you know, just smelling these sauteed onions and garlic in your house, you'll know why it just extracts all these flavors and aromas. And that's just gonna, in my situation, I think it makes the meatloaf taste incredible. So you wanna get it to about this stage after about five to seven minutes, you'll see it's browning, it's translucent, they're really soft. You're just going to turn off the heat Set it aside, let it cool down. You don't necessarily want to throw this right into your meat mixture because one, you're going to burn your hands and two, it's going to actually start to cook your meat. So let it cool down to sort of room temperature or if it's still a little warm, that's okay. And you're just going to fold it in. Now notice, um, I try not to squish the meat really hard. It makes your meat tough, guys. So when you are doing all the mixing, try to use a folding technique, not so much squishing the meat between your fingers. That's a tip to make your, uh, whatever it is you're cooking, a little less tough. So now I've got a piece of parchment paper down on a sheet pan. I put my rack over top, and then I line the rack with aluminum foil. Yes, lots of steps, but again, worth it in the end. So I'm going to go ahead and pierce this aluminum foil with a bunch of different holes with a knife. And what that's going to do, it's going to allow the grease from the meat to drip through so your meatloaf is not going to be super greasy and soggy and dripping with oil when it's all done. So I'm just going to go ahead and form. I just halved the meat mixture and then I formed it into two equal sized loaves here. Kind of think Easter egg type shape. And uh, so I'm just forming those pretty quickly and then we'll get started on our glaze. So again, I use two pounds of meat. If you're going to half this, you're going to half all the uh, the other ingredients I had listed there and it'll make you a good, probably about one and a half pound meatloaf. So moving on to our glaze. So you'll need some apple cider vinegar, some ketchup and some brown sugar. And to a small bowl, I'm gonna add about a tablespoon and a half of the apple cider vinegar. Then I'll add about a half to two thirds cup ketchup and then about two heaping tablespoons of brown sugar. You're just going to combine them all in this little bowl, stir it up real good, and then give it a taste. And then from there you can decide if you want it a little sweeter, go ahead add some more brown sugar. If you want a little more tangy, some cider vinegar, so on and so forth, you get the idea. But this can be to your acquired taste. So just combine it really good like so. And then what we're going to do is we're going to spread this on top of our loaves. And you will want to reserve a little bit because halfway through cooking we'll go ahead and add a little bit more to them. So a silicone brush would work great here or if all else fails the back of the spoon works great too. So you're going to use about three quarters of our glaze and you're going to evenly spread it around our two meatloafs, being sure to get around the sides and of course all over the top. Again, the benefit of not using a loaf pan is that you have more surface area exposed so you can get this glaze all over and it tastes so good. Once it's in the oven, it starts to caramelize and harden a little bit. And then halfway through baking, we're going to go ahead and then just add another layer of it and use up the rest of our glaze and uh, just really intensifies the flavors. So once I'm done coating all over both meatloafs, being sure to get all the sides, my oven has been preheating to 350 degrees. 
We're going to go ahead and place it in for a total of about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes of cooking time. So an hour and about 10 minutes later, this is what we're looking at. Delicious, healthy meatloaf. I hope you guys enjoy. Make sure to give it a thumbs up if you like. And be sure to subscribe for more clean, simple, and healthy meals.